much for having me. Um, as she said, we own, I'm a serial entrepreneur and um, it's a problem. So we owned five businesses at the start of this year. We've recently closed three of them and I could not be happier. So um, when she was talking about our um, topic this month, which is simplicity, I said, ooh, I am like the actual over, I love to overcomplicate everything. Um, so I was like, I'm very qualified to teach on simplicity because I'm just gonna share with you all the mistakes I made so you can now learn from them and make a simpler life. Um, okay, let me, technology is not my favorite. So hopefully it all works today. So a little bit about myself. Um, I have four boys, um, 15, 13, 11, and four. Number four was a fun surprise. Um, my husband and I have a spreadsheet, like eight counting down the years that we get to move to New York when all of our kids are out of town or out of the house. And I got pregnant and he's like, I've got to update the spreadsheet. It's 18 more years. We're stuck. Just kidding. I love it. It's so fun. So um, tonight we'll be, I, I go to like football games all the time. I'm the ultimate sports mom. Um, been married to my husband for 19 years. I am the co-owner of Junk in the Trunk Vintage Market. Have you guys heard of that? Yeah. Um, we just had our big um, market last weekend. We have about 15,000 people that come through the doors at Westworld, 165 vendors, and I'm a little bit exhausted. So if I'm not making sense, just give me a little wave and I'll like reset for a second. Um, and then we also own the Foundress, which, which is our female networking group for ambitious females. And um, like she said, I do have a passion, a fierce passion for supporting small businesses in general. With Junk in the Trunk, we have supported thousands of small businesses over the years and um, when we started, um, junk in the trunk 12 years ago, my business partner, Lindsay and I, um, we kept looking at each other going, gosh, I wish there was someone who's done this before or who has, who I could go to and, and a elderly woman, not elderly, that was the wrong word, an older, wiser woman. And, um, and just ask the direction, like, tell me what to do sometimes. Right. When you're, when you're owning your own business, it's like, I just want someone to tell me what to do. Anyone relate to that? Um, and no one's there. And so we said, I wish there was a community of women that we could ask for help, that we could walk alongside us and mentor us. And after seven years of saying that, we just said, okay, this doesn't exist. So we're going to make it. So we started that five years ago. And um, like I said, closed a few other businesses this year, which felt very freeing as entrepreneurs. I know we have a lot of ideas, right? Um, and not all of them are made to do. So We'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, so yeah, okay, that's me. All right, so I don't love hearing myself talk. So I'm gonna, we're gonna do some interactive stuff today. So I want you to find a friend, someone you don't know. So if you're sitting next to all the people that you brought, I encourage you to stand up and find someone you don't know. And I want you guys to talk about, um, tell yourself, tell everyone who you are, what you do, and then what is an area of your business or life that you need to simplify? All right, so um, at the Foundress, we don't take ourselves too seriously. We like to have a lot of fun. Um, I think as entrepreneurs, we can get into our mindset and our zone and um, we just are laser focused. And so we'd like to do a little fun thing. So I need everyone to stand up. You can just be in your own seat, but just stand up. You guys are gonna hate me by the end of this, I promise. It's fun. All right, so we like to loosen it up a little bit before you have to sit and listen for a minute. Sarah's ready. Come on, Sarah. All right, so we like to do what we call a dance break. I wanna see that. Oh, hold on, hold on. All right, come on, let's go. I need to turn this up. I need to see you moving, come on. No one gets out of this, come on. Shake it, really, let's go. No one gets out of it. What? No. Come on. All right. I see you in the back. Let's go. Let's go. And if you know the words, let's sing it. Come on. Come on. Oh, hard. Yeah. She's got it. Come on. Come on. Move it. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Oh, wait. What's it? Yeah. 
go. All right, that's the end of your torture. You can sit down. I don't know. I, I don't know about you, but as a creative, I hate to sit down for very long. So I have to move my body, have a little fun. Okay. So, okay, now I'm out of breath. That's what happens when you don't work out. Okay, so things we're going to cover today is why is simplicity important in your business? And how do you simplify your business? How many of you guys are business owners? How many of you work for a company that you have like a C-suite title? A couple. Um, and then students. I know we have a lot of students in here. Do you guys want to own your own business? Eventually? Yeah. I don't know. Sarah's going to talk next week about how not, why not to be a business owner. Um, yeah, I feel like, I do feel like though, if someone would have told me what it entails, we may have made different choices, right? Um, I, I always joke, we take a, we start our own business to avoid the nine to five and then we work 24 seven. Is that right? <laughs> okay, so areas we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about vision, systems and processes, streamlining your offering, effective communication, customer approach, and personal growth. Personal growth, um, I really, really strongly believe that your business will not grow unless you are growing. So we are going to talk about that. Um, they are directly correlated. Uh, and I think a lot of us like to separate those, right? We like to go, well, I'm too busy to work on myself. I've got to work on my business. And then we wonder why our business is not growing. Um, and so we're going to talk a lot about that because I, I do feel very passionate about that. And they are correlated and tied together. Okay. Vision. So Starting with a clear and concise vision is really tough. Sarah, I'm going to actually, I didn't know you were coming today and I'm going to be talking about you. So Sarah does brand um, development and she helped us with the founders and we were sitting in the room and she goes, so what's your vision? The dreaded question. What's your vision? Where do you want your business to go? And I was saying little things like, well, I want like this many people in the building. And I want that. She's like, no, that's like a goal. I want to know what your vision is. Like, what is your actual vision? And what did I do? I cried a lot. Um, and I'm not a crier. I really am not a crier. But what was scary, what was scary for me was to talk about my vision because A, it means that I have to do it, right? And B, what she was able to walk me through was you, because you have a vision does not mean you have to do everything. And I don't know about you. If you're a, are you a delegator? If you're a delegator, raise your hand. If you're a really good delegator. Okay. Thank you. So thank you. You are my people. It terrifies the crap out of me to delegate, right? Because guess what? I know how I work. I know how I want things done. And it's really, really hard to pass that on. So what I'm telling Sarah, I want Foundress in every city in the United States. I want every woman to be able to access resources and community like the Foundress. That scared the shit out of me. Sorry, I don't know if I can cuss in here. Okay, sorry. Um, because I know my capacity. I know I'm, I'm a hard worker. I can get shit done, but I can't be everywhere at once. So when I shared my vision, it was terrifying. Do you guys ever feel that way? My big vision scared the crap out of me. But when Sarah helped me like take it down, and, and really take it into bite-sized pieces and simplify it, I was able to go, okay, it's one step in front of the other. We were talking at Masterminds yesterday about um, this very thing. And one gal was sharing, she's like, I'm terrified of, she's just starting her business. And she's like, I have so many things to do. And another gal goes, how do you eat an elephant? Anyone know? One bite, one bite at a time, right? So we simplify the process. Um, also, I think vision is like, like we talked about, it's really hard to admit and say out loud. So I have a funny little video for you. Okay. I know they're talking about love here, but it was just such a good example. Sometimes we have to know what we want and we take that big, scary vision and we boil it down to one thing and we simplify it. And I loved even just the example of like, no matter what you do, not everyone's going to be happy. And I think as entrepreneurs, we started our business to solve problems and to help people, right? Um, and then knowing that is terrifying that we're, we are going to disappoint people. We are going to let people down, but what do we want? What's our vision and simplifying that down is so important for your business. Okay. Ensure every team member understands and aligns with your vision. How many of you have a team of people? It could be one person. It could be multiple. Yeah. Okay. So it is so important to communicate that vision to your team so that they all know 
what your vision is. And if they don't align with your vision, that's a conversation um, because that's not going to work. They're not only you can do only you can be you. But when your team is on board with you and understands your vision and where you're going, um, it's just going to be a lot easier road for you. Um, and then simple mission statements create an easy yes and no. Um, I'm going to show you. Okay, so our mission for every ambitious woman to have the validation and encouragement that she needs to succeed in business. Sarah wrote that. Good job, Sarah. Uh, <laughs> it's simple, right? So anything that I, any decision I make in my business, I run through this mission statement. If it doesn't align, it's an easy no. And I think, as, again, as, as business owners, we like to solve problems and we like to help others. Um, and that can get us in trouble. So if we continue not focusing on the simple mission statement and we make decisions throughout our career, pleasing everyone and solving other people's problems, which is what we like to do, um, we can end up in a really scary place because we will be so far away from our vision and our ultimate goal um, that we won't even know who we are. Can you guys, do you guys relate to that? Like there's something, again, like five businesses, right? We started five businesses because there were problems that we kept coming across and we're like, no one's doing this. We can do this. I'm very capable. Does it mean I should do that? I don't know. Let's read it. Right? So go back to your mission statement. We made a lot of mistakes. We did a lot of things that did not align with our mission statements. Um, and it got us off track and it was a whole lot of work to get back. And it's even harder to say no after you've already said yes and committed to something. So every decision you make, run it through that mission statement, keep it simple and make sure you are filtering everything through so that you know that this is the direction I'm going and these decisions, one, one bite at a time, right? I'm making one decision at a time to get to this. Um, but if it's over here and it doesn't help this mission statement, then I'm off track. Okay. Systems and processes. Is your business all in your head? How many of you, all, everything you do in your business is in your head. Anyone? Just me? Okay, thank you. I was like, I, I can't be the only one here. Um, so I was chatting with one of my really good friends and we were, we were about to hire. And I said, I just don't know exactly where I, I need to hire 17 people at the same time. And I have no idea how to decide who to hire. And she said, well, what's your process? And I laughed. I was like, what do you mean? What's my process? My process is that I know I do everything and it's all right here. And she's like, oh my God, girlfriend, you need help. Um, and so we talked about like mapping. Have you guys done mapping for your business? Anyone, do you guys know what that is? Uh-huh. So, so she said, you need to do mapping and that will give you the answer of who you need to hire. I don't know about you as a creative. I, I hate those things. I hate numbers. I hate processes. They tie me down. They terrify me. That's not my favorite thing to do. So I ignored them for 12 years and now, now we're having to get our shit together and it's, it's hard. So I encourage you, if you're in the beginning of your business, do it now. Um, but we sat down and we did post-it notes. And so we wrote every single process of our business. We wrote on a post-it note, every single thing that we do. So you have to sit down, you have to think through your processes. You have to think through your business. What do you do? How many emails do you send? What's the process of inquiring uh, or when customers inquire, how do you respond to them? Who responds to them? Do you know? Uh, so we sat and what, we wrote it all down. We put sticky notes all over the wall in the room. And then we funneled them into systems. Like, so this is the system, this is the system. And after a while, we realized that most of our stuff was in one system. We're like, okay, that's your first hire. So when you can simplify things down and see where you need help, those decisions are so much easier. Instead of, I need 17 people, I actually just needed one. But until you can simplify that system, it's really hard to know um, what you need in your business. Okay. Also, um, think like your customer. So for Junk in the Trunk, one of the things that we did, we had, so if you're not familiar with that, what that is, it's a vintage market. We have 165 vendors. We have 15,000 people that come through in one weekend and shop. And we had a lot of ideas. We thought, let's do a class. Let's have someone in the middle of the weekend. Um, let's have someone come and teach a class on making jewelry. Let's have someone um, come and do DIY crafts with people so they can take it and go. Sounds like a great idea. Let's make a man's cave. Cause guess what? Those women drag their husbands and the husbands are walking around like this. 
trying to shop while their, their wives have all these bags of stuff. So we're like, oh, great. Let's do like NFL game. We'll have it. We'll have leather couches. We'll set up this cool place. Um, in our heads, that sounded great. But what happened was we did all those things and our customers, they were there to shop. They weren't there to make a craft. They weren't there to listen to a class. They were there to shop. They had a million bags in their hands. They were juggling stuff. They didn't want to stop and put it down and try to like do something on the side. Guess who sat in the man cave? Any guesses? Kids, women, nursing women. That's who sat in our man cave. So we set up this awesome place. We thought it was going to be the coolest. Our husbands were like, this is it. This is going to be awesome. Our husbands sat there. And then they got overtaken by women who were nursing their babies because they needed a place to sit. And so the moment we had to shift our mindset. And so how do we think like our customer and go so simple? And what we do now is we go every step of the way in our business from someone pulling up in their car, getting out, entering in the ticket booth, we think about our customer and what it would be like to do it. And we actually go through the motions ourselves and take it step by step and simplify that process. It saved, it's going to save us so much money. We spent so much time and money hiring people to do things, um, bringing in the furniture, bringing in the TVs that no one used because really we just needed a nursing mom's room um, and a place for the kids to play. So if you're able to simplify your processes and your systems down, in your business, it will dictate, you, you'll save money, you will save time. Um, and do we just really wanna like emphasize thinking like your customer. Um, again, we have a lot of great ideas. We shouldn't do all of these great ideas because they don't work within our business. Um, okay. And then a couple tools that we use, Asana. Anyone familiar with Asana? Um, love that it has changed our life. We took everything that was in my head and put it in Asana. I get alerts when I need to do things. My teammates get alerts. I get alerts when they finish things. So I always know where in the process things are. It's a game changer. Monday is also a great tool. If you are more of a right, left brain, left creative, right, right. Right's creative. Thank you. Left is numbers. Okay. So if you're more of a left brainer, Monday is a great tool. Monday.com. Planoly for social is great. And then mini chat is also great to auto, auto, um, automate stuff. That's for social. I'm sure you use that um, a lot. So a couple tools to help. Okay. I just went over that. All right. Effective communication. Communication is where we like to overcomplicate things the most. I'm kind of speaking to the women. Men, you guys, you guys got it down. You're direct. You're quick and I'm, I'm generalizing. So I know I realize this is not everyone. I tend to actually communicate more like I'm in my feminine or male energy. Um, but except for I add exclamation points. So I'm like direct and like to the point. And then there's like a little happy exclamation point. Like, don't be mad. Um, but women like to complicate things. We just do, um, especially when it comes to communication, because we don't like to let people down. So, um, one of the things that we do in our team, we schedule time with partners and our team to discuss issues. So there's three of us who own Junk in the Trunk Vintage Market. We all get along really great. Do we all agree all the time? No. Um, and so what happened was over the years, we didn't want to, none of us really wanted to kind of cause a ruckus. So feelings get hurt, decisions get made. Um, it's inevitable when you work with a team, you're not all going to agree all the time. Um, and so what happened was there was resentment that got built up. And when that resentment gets built up, then just the simplest, easiest task becomes so hard and frustrated because you already are holding on to that resentment. Um, and so, and then there's an explosion. Um, I'm speaking from the women's side. I, I don't know how you guys communicate as well, but um, it seems like you guys are more direct. So it's, that's a good thing. Um, but what we did, what we in, ended up implementing was a time that was scheduled on our calendar. So we had once a month that this was the time to air grievances. It's in our calendar. It's a, a moment where everyone knows what's happening. So you can come to the table and say, hey, when you said that last week, it was really frustrating. Or when you called that client um, behind my back, that really pissed me off. So it's a time where emotions are out of it. It's scheduled. You're able to communicate what's working, what's not working. And really what we ended up seeing was that we'd come to these meetings and like, you got anything? Nope. Okay, do you? Nope. Okay, great. Because it was on the schedule, we were able to air those out immediately and then they never festered. And so we ended up not actually needing this, um, but because it was scheduled and on the, on the calendar, it was something that we knew 
we had the freedom to communicate with each other. Um, another thing, um, take the emotion out of it. So the 110 rule, we actually ended up putting this together because for teammates, I don't know about you, I really like to be right. Anyone else? Show of hands. How many of you like to be right? Okay, so what I noticed was that we would get in arguments over shit I didn't care about. I just wanted to be right. Um, and that's really humbling to, to like hear and notice. Um, and I, it feels real shitty. But I was like, once I start arguing, I am going, I will take you down. I will win. I guarantee it. Ask my husband every time. Um, so what we ended up implementing was a one out of 10 rule. And are you, we now use this with our kids. I use this with my husband. We use this with our team members. Um, and what we do is when there's an argument or, or a disagreement, so saying, I want to do this. I want to go this way. You want to go that way. Okay. Out of a one out of 10, where do you sit in this? How important is this to you? 10 being, this is so important. I'm so passionate about this. One, and we actually ended up using zero too sometimes. Like one's like, I don't care about it. Um, it was able to take the emotion out of it. So it, it took us all a step back. We didn't have to be right. It was just asking, where are you on the scale? How important is, and usually one person was really passionate about it. And then we go, great, you get to make that decision. Because the other one, we're at a one. And so we took the emotion out of it and we're able to make those decisions. After that, we literally have zero disagreements. It's incredible. Our whole team, we meet, we joke now. I mean, we'll go out to lunch and we're like, where do you want to go? That's a zero for me. Okay, you get to pick. Um, so we do, we use it for little, little um, discussions and big decisions in our business. All right, make sure I get all, okay. Um, if your systems are simple and communicated, it's easy to reconcile with team and customers. Um, if you have a repeatable system in your business, you know what you're doing and what your team is doing at all times. If it's simple, um, the, the more simple it is, the easier it is to communicate with your clients and with your team, team members. Excuse me. So example of this, we have a photographer that we use. In one week, she had two emails from clients. One was complaining about the time and when she received her photos. Um, how many of you guys get complaining clients? We've all had at least a few. Um, and it makes you feel gross, right? Where you're like, you start your business, you want everyone to love what you do. And when someone's unhappy, we take, we take that personally. Um, and so with her systems, what she was able to do, so she had the one client that was upset about the um, turnaround time. And one client was just mad about everything. She literally just ripped her a new one. She complained about everything. I didn't like the way your hair looked when we were at the shoot. I didn't like the way, I like all the things. And so this photographer said she was able, because she has systems in place, she was able to stop and go, did I communicate my systems really well and go through my checklist with my clients? With the gal with the turnaround time, she said, what I realized was I gave her an expectation because when I originally sent her a proposal, I said it would be between this and this. And it ended up being two weeks later. So she goes, I realized that I made a mistake in communicating. I didn't tell her because it was a bigger project. I didn't change the timeline from my normal contract. And so I made that mistake. So she was then able to go to the client and say, I'm so sorry. It's gonna be two more weeks. I will have everything with you. She was able to reconcile with that because she knew the system. And then with the lady that was just unhappy, she's also, she said, I looked through the system and realized I did everything right. I gave her exactly what I told her I'd give her. The deliverables were right. It was on time. And so she's just unhappy. And you're able to remove that emotion out of it and go, that's on you. That's not on me. I did what I needed to do. Um, but it all boils down to your systems. And if your systems are simplified, you're able to go through that checklist and go, did I do everything right? That's all you can do, right? You can't control their emotions, but you can control what you do. But if you don't have the systems, you're like, shit, where's that sticky note that I put? Who, who did I, you know, what did I say to her when I was talking to her on the street and tell her how long this was going to be? Okay. You guys familiar with John Maxwell? Yeah. Okay. So I was able to, a friend of mine hired him to come to her team and she zoomed it and she sent me a, it's probably not supposed to be doing this, but she sent me a copy of it. And he was talking about motivating. And I think um, one of the things we're going to kind of go into personal growth, but one of the things that he said was we over, we overcomplicate 
motivation. So if you have a team, if you are trying to motivate your clients, if you are trying to lead someone or some, um, some team, that we try to focus on the team. And what he said, which was so great, is says to motivate your team, it's simple. You must first be motivated. And he said, I've never seen a leader not be motivated. And again, I think we try to focus on our team and what they need and what can we give them. And, and he's like, focus on yourself. It's really simple. Take a step back, focus on yourself. If you are motivated and you are doing the right things every single day, your team's going to see that and they're going to, they're going to implement that as well. And if they don't, it's time to say goodbye. Simplify. Okay. To motivate your team is simple. You must first be motivated. Um, he also talked about, which I, I just not necessarily simplicity. I'm going off track just a little bit, but I think it's so great because all of you guys are leaders in one sense or the other, whether you're leading a team, whether you're leading your clients, um, as a creative, as a business owner, you are leading and you're influencing people. And, um, in times like this, it can be hard. Um, I know the economy is kind of dipping. We see it, we see the effects of it in not only our business and our daily life when we go to the grocery store and get gas. Um, and so, um, back to John Maxwell, what he was saying was that we build a well, we build a well and we fill a well. And so when you are working and you are getting up and doing the right thing every day, you are putting things in that well, you're putting water in that well. And there's times where you don't see any response. You don't see clients coming. You don't see that money coming in. Um, and it can be scary, right? But what he said was, if you keep building that well, when, it, when the time comes, you have water to draw from to serve your clients because you've been doing the work every single day. And again, that simple, those simple processes, if you're doing those every single day, you are building your well. And then when a time comes to draw on that, you have something to give. And what he said was, people like to, in times like this, they like to give up. How many of you guys have felt like you wanted to give up? I told my husband last week, I'm like, I'm going to just go work at Starbucks. Mm -hmm. It seems easy, right? So I can, I can go, I can make some drinks. I can leave them there and I can go home and not feel like I have to do a million things when I get home. Right. Um, but we get like that and we feel like that when we're not seeing that give back, right. When we're not seeing the money come in, when we're not seeing the clients come in, when we're not seeing the growth as fast as we want it to, to grow. Um, but he said, if you have your systems and you do the right thing every day, you are building that well. When the time comes, you have stuff to draw from. If you quit or you're like, I'm just going to stop until the economy comes back, your well's dry. So when then clients come back, who are they going to go to? They're going to go to people who have the full well, a full thing to give. Uh, they're not going to go back to you if you have an empty well. So just keep that in mind. It was something that really helped me. Um, I think it can be really discouraging when you're trying to build this business or have it grow. Um, and you're not seeing the growth as fast. And this is a, a, just a really hard time, I think, in the economy. So habit stacking, you guys familiar with that? Habit stacking? Um, again, it's eating the elephant one bite at a time. Um, as a business owner, we have a lot on our plate. We're juggling, we're, we're calling, we're emailing, we're doing all the things. We're, we're everything to everybody. Um, and that can be really overwhelming. And if we think of the big picture... It's terrifying and it's almost impossible. It's like, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to do this. Um, so just that small habit and habit stacking. So when you, um, we also talked about time blocking this morning. Um, and when we broke out, we, we were discussing time blocking. Like, how do you get things done? You do things one at a time. So set a timer, give yourselves 20 minutes, answer all your emails. When that timer goes off, then do the next thing. Yesterday I was sitting at my computer. I teach this. Do I follow it all the time? No. Um, I was sitting at my computer. I had 25 tabs open and when I had, I was emailing someone and then they asked a question. So I went to my Asana and then my Asana, I had saw all the things that I needed to do. And then I started doing that. And then I had to go back to our, our worksheet and I was filling that out. And I realized I sat there for three hours and I did nothing because I was spiraling and I was trying to do too much and be too much to everyone at the same time. Um, and so time blocking is huge. St habit stacking is huge. When you get in that routine, I get up. I have my coffee, I sit down and I answer all the emails. My rule is if I can answer an email in under two minutes, do it right then. If it comes in, do it right then. Because those are the emails that then are, they're a cloud, right? They're like, oh my God, I forgot to respond to that person. Oh my gosh, I need to email her back. Oh my God, it's, it's that constant nagging that you can clear that in under two minutes, just do it. So anytime an email comes in, I, I check my email probably 25 times a day. 
I scan through. If it's a two minute answer, I do it right then. And then I sit down and time block the rest of my emails um, just to get that cloud off of my head. Um, resource, Atomic Habits. Have you guys read that? If you have not, I highly recommend it. It is a great book, um, just talking about how habit stacking is helpful. Um, one of the examples in the book is so simple, but it's like, okay, if you're trying to start your day off and start fresh, you brush your teeth, right? Everyone hopefully brushes their teeth every morning. Um, and then after you brush your teeth, add one more thing. So if you want to make sure you're washing your face every day, as soon as you brush your teeth, you wash your face. And then your body and your brain recognize like, oh, I'm done with my teeth. Now it's time for my face. And you can do that in business too. So habit stack. It will change your game and make things so much more simple. Okay. So we talked about vision, systems and processes, streamlining your offering, effective communication, customer approach, and personal growth. Did you guys have any questions? <laughs> 